Oh, hi, FBC kids, and welcome to another week where we can see how to glow in the dark, like Jesus. So far, we've talked about shining God's light and how Jesus is that light in the darkness. Now, today, we're going to talk about how light and darkness are choices that we often have to make. So let's see what we can do to make sure that we are making the best choice. Let's get started with some music, and we'll come back to play a game. Shade. We are precious in his sight. By his love, we are made. Got my red and yellow, sister. black and white. Every color, every shade. We are precious in his sight. By his love, we are made. we are making choices every single day and there are a lot of easy choices and there are a lot of hard choices for us to make but we're going to start with some easy choices okay and i would like you to know to pick if you want to be on the blue team with your answer or the red this one's red it's not it's not glowing brightly enough we got to glow in the dark hang on that's better okay or the red team choice ready candy or chocolate Ooh, good choice. Pizza or hamburger? Baseball or basketball? Carrots or broccoli? These reds just not shining very bright. Yellow or green? I'm a purple girl myself. That's why I picked red and blue so they could make purple in their colors together. Math or science? <laughs> Art? or music and this one's but a, a hard one for me books or movies yeah you see I love both of those things and it's hard to make that choice but the other things like candy or chocolate it was easy for me to pick candy because I'm not a big fan of chocolate so if I have a strong opinion I can make the choice really easily I know candy is my favorite or baseball or basketball I don't really care about either of them, so I'll go see hockey. I bet if you're not a big carrot person, there's not much of a chance you're going to say that carrots are your choice in that, right? And it's also okay to change our minds about things that we like and we don't like. We grow and we change, but there might be a time 
when you're faced with a lot tougher choices than what we just talked about, right? Yellow, green, purple, colors, they're easy to pick. Our favorite things in school, easy to pick. Our favorite things to eat, easy to pick. But our actions, our choices, when things are tough, how are we going to know what to choose? Guess what? Jesus shows us the way. So let's grab our Bible story, and we're going to go see how Jesus makes his choice. Okay, it's time to turn on the spotlight of our Bible story. Each time I say scripture spotlight, we are going to shine this light. Do you want to play along at home? Okay, so Jesus is actually going to go before a guy who was like the judge of the city. So a judge, if you've never seen in court before, if they want to get someone's attention, they have this little hammer called a gavel, and they bang it on the ground. So you can pound your fist and say, order, order, or scripture spotlight. Are you ready? Let's we're starting in Mark chapter 15, and we're going to read simply verse 1 to start. Very early in the morning, the leading priest, the elders, and the teachers of the religious law, the entire high council, met to discuss their next steps. They bound Jesus, led him away, and took him to Pilate, the Roman governor. Um, whoa, already a lot is going on. So last time we were together, Jesus was having dinner with his disciples, his close friends. And when he told them that one of them was going to betray him, they all kind of looked around like, what, me? Jesus, me? Well, because Jesus said it, we knew it was going to come true. And that very night, he was betrayed and arrested by one of his own disciples, Judas. Now, he was brought then to the court, all of these leaders, all of these people in charge, to determine whether he was innocent or guilty. And the one who had to make the final decision was someone named Pilate. Scripture spotlight. <laughs> We're going to read verses 2 through 5 now. Pilate asked Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus replied, you have said it. Then the leading priest kept accusing him of many crimes. And Pilate asked him, aren't you going to answer them? What about all these charges they're bringing against you? But Jesus said nothing, much to Pilate's surprise. Jesus hadn't broken any laws. He was completely innocent. But the religious leaders, they were angry and they were scared because he was changing things up and they were, he was he was telling people that it was all about God instead of the religious leaders, and they didn't like it. And they wanted him gone. They were threatened by his popularity. His teachings about God were opposite to what they wanted people to believe about themselves. They also thought that he was lying about being God's son. For that, especially, they didn't want Jesus arrested and, and put in jail. They wanted him to receive the worst punishment they could give. They wanted him scripture spotlight. We're reading verses 6 through 11 now. Now it was the governor's custom each year during the Passover celebration to release one prisoner, anyone that the people requested. One of the prisoners at that time was Barabbas, a revolutionary who had committed murder in an uprising. And the crowd went to Pilate and asked him to release a prisoner as usual. Now, Would you like me to release to you this king of the Jews? Pilate asked, for he realized by now that the leading priests had arrested Jesus out of envy because they were jealous. But at this point, the leading priest stirred up the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas instead of Jesus. You see, Pilate couldn't find any evidence that Jesus had done something wrong. So he let the people choose who they wanted to free. This other man named Barabbas, you know, he killed somebody. Or Jesus. He probably thought that they were going to choose Jesus because Jesus was innocent and all this. But the crowd oh, was stirred into a frenzy and they demanded to have Barabbas released instead. Barabbas, who was guilty of committing actual crimes. Now the religious leaders, they went into the crowd and they convinced everybody to choose Barabbas over Jesus and that Jesus deserved to die. And by the end, everyone in the crowd was demanding Barabbas' release. Scripture spotlight. We're reading verses 12 through 15. 
Pilate asked them, Then what should I do with this man that you call the king of the Jews? And they shouted back, Crucify him! Why, Pilate demanded, what crime has he committed? But the mob roared even louder, Crucify him! So, to pacify the crowd, Pilate released Barabbas to them, and he ordered Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. The crowd had made a terrible choice. They really thought they were making the right call because the leaders around them convinced them of this. And before he died, Jesus even prayed for the people who put him on the cross, who chose to have him crucified, who shouted it, who demanded it, saying that they didn't even realize what they were doing. Sometimes we don't know what to do, what choice we can make, and we end up choosing the wrong thing. But God never gives up on us. God never takes away his love or forgiveness for us. And every day we get to choose the light. But even when we make a mistake and we do something that's wrong, we get to ask for forgiveness. And God loves us and forgives us. That was why Jesus went to the cross. And we can choose Jesus every time. Whether we make the right choice or the wrong choice, we can choose to follow Jesus or we can choose to ask for his forgiveness. But we can always choose Jesus. Have you ever felt alone before? Hi, it's me in the dark. I don't know if you can see me or not. Don't worry, that's gonna change in just a second. But if you've ever felt alone in the dark, guess what? One, you're not alone. We have God with us. Two, other people feel the same way too. So how can we help them when we're feeling this way? It just takes one. It takes one light in the darkness to open up an entire space to remove that scary cloud of darkness. It takes so little to light up a big space. And it really only takes a few people doing the right thing, saying the right thing, that starts a pattern or a trend, and it influences and encourages others. Now, we saw in our story today that the religious leaders used that to spark negativity, to convince people to hurt and crucify and kill Jesus, and to release Barabbas instead. But think about what they could have done if they had whispered the light instead. Think about what could have happened if instead of evil and darkness being spread, we took that and shined God's light instead. One little spark, one little flame can turn into a roaring blaze. Like starting the wave at a sporting event. Just a couple of people standing up, throwing their arms up, can start an entire stadium of thousands participating. Or if someone starts singing happy birthday, quickly others will join in. Today we saw that a small group of people could start a crowd doing something awful. Small things can start huge events. Think about how contagious love and kindness could be sharing God's light. It can move people to do things. It can change everything. So we can choose to be that small bit of light that shines brightly and gets spread throughout the darkness because we can choose Jesus. Okay, we're going to the Old Testament for just a little bit, but I wanna know, have you ever made a promise with somebody? Okay, have you ever made a pinky promise with somebody? <laughs> it's when two friends lock their pinkies together and they make a promise, like, I promise to play a game with you today, or I promise to pray for you tonight. God makes promises with us humans, but we call these covenants. I'm going to read from Jeremiah chapter 31, and we're going to read verses 31 through 34. And it says, the day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant, that's with the people of Israel and Judah. This covenant will not be like the one that I made their ancestors when I took them by the hand and brought them out of the land of Egypt. They broke that covenant. Though I loved them as a husband loves a wife, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. And they will not need to teach their neighbor, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, 
you should know the Lord. For everyone, from the least to the greatest, know me already, says the Lord. And I will forgive their wickedness, and I will never again remember their sins. Way, 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 way long ago. God made a covenant to the people of Israel, a promise. Now, God's side of this promise was always kept. He always stayed faithful. But the Israelites had trouble keeping their end of the deal. And they kept forgetting about God, and they kept turning to literally anything else. But God never forgot them. And he wanted to renew this covenant, this promise with his people. God says that they were always his people. He would always love and forgive them. Now this new promise, this new covenant was going to be Jesus. And this promise was no longer just for some people. It was going to be for all people. And God forgives us through this promise every time we mess up. Every time we make the wrong choice. Every time we turn away from God. He forgives us. And when we choose Jesus, which is God's son, part of the forgiveness that he gives us, we choose that road that through Jesus leads us to God. The God who, like Jeremiah says, forgives and will remember our wrong choices no more because we can choose Jesus. Now, we were talking about Psalm 27, 1a, and it is our memory verse for this month, our Easter series, and it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? What do we have to be scared of? What kind of darkness could possibly come our way when God Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, God of the universe, creator of all things, Holy Spirit that comes within and indwells in us, is my light and my salvation. Nothing's, nothing's bigger or better than that. So what do we have to fear? Nothing. So we are wrapping up as we get closer to Easter. I have some questions for you. Who did the religious leaders hand Jesus over to so that he could be put on trial? Do you remember the guy's name? P Pilate. It's kind of like the person that flies an airplane, but it's spelled differently. Now, what choice did Pilate, this big leader guy, give to the crowd? He could release Jesus or he could release Barabbas. Why do you think they made that choice? A lot of different things could have happened in that crowd, but they, those religious leaders did not want Jesus released. And we know all of this time later that it was all part of God's plan. Jesus had to go through these things. And as heartbreaking and as horrible and as terrible this pain was going to be for Jesus, he willingly did it so that we could have salvation through his blood for his forgiveness of our sins. We read in Jeremiah 31 those verses. Now, we talked about a promise, kind of like a pinky promise, that God made with his people and with us for future generations. Do you remember what those promises were? Have you ever made a mistake? Have you made a wrong choice? Have you chosen the darkness sometimes instead? Yeah. What happened? Did the world end? Or did Jesus forgive you for it? Did people in your life, your moms, your dads, your aunts, your uncles, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, did they forgive you? Because they love you. Jesus has a love that is, can you imagine, even so much greater than the love of our closest people. And he forgives us when we ask for it. How can we help others to spread the light, to be the light in the darkness? Like we had just one flashlight going. How can we start a blaze of light shining for everyone? I am so excited as we continue. We're getting closer and closer, and I just, whew, I'm excited. I hope you are too. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we close? Heavenly Father, thank you for the reminder that even just one little light has such power over the darkness. Thank you for your son, Jesus, for sending him to die on the cross for our sins, that we can accept his blood as our chance of forgiveness, that you will wash away our sins, Lord, and forget them. Remember them no more. Help us to choose your light. Help us to be strong and courageous to follow the path that you light for us, Lord. Help us to choose Jesus in the darkness and in the good times, in the scary times, in the fun times, and every time, Lord, that Jesus is within us all the time. 
Lord, I thank you for these kids and their families. I ask that you strengthen them, build them up, protect them, Lord, and shine brightly through them like a city on a hilltop. And Lord, that we can be still and know that you are God. Lord, I pray for our church family. I pray for this facility, Lord. Use it. Use us to shine brightly in our community, Lord, that we can stand firm on your foundation, that you are our light and our salvation. What do we have to fear, Lord? Heavenly Father, I pray for our leadership. And as this Easter season comes in, as we welcome our community, as we welcome our visitors, as we welcome our families into this building, Lord, that your spirit is here, that you speak through us and move through us and shine brightly lord help us to turn our focus fully on you and be honoring and pleasing to you in your holy and precious name i pray amen we're getting closer and sadly things have to get sadder before we celebrate the greatest day in history so join us if you can join us here in person i'd love to see you we have some wonderful ways to celebrate over the next couple of weeks and I can't wait to see you, whether it's online, hi friends, or in person. I can't wait. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.